The floating anniversary is the third episode of the first season of The Middle. And this is an okay episode. I didn't love it, but there are certainly some good aspects to it. So as always, I will talk about the episode and share some thoughts along the way. I will be going through things chronologically. Sometimes I group them by part of the narrative. But with this one, I think it makes the most sense to just go through the events chronologically. And it starts off... By establishing that it's Mike and Frankie's anniversary and they keep rolling their anniversary from one year to the next. So this year, Mike gives Frankie a gift and that's the promise that they're going to be going to the carpet remnant store. And that sounds boring, but Frankie is very excited about this because their bedroom carpet is a bit of a mess and they're finally going to get a replacement. Unfortunately, things just go from bad to worse for Frankie. It starts off with Brick feeling unwell, so she has to take him to work and he stays in the back of a a random car that's on the lot. We'll come back to what happens with that in a bit. We then have a story with Sue and she's part of what she calls the Lamination Club. And I have to say, I love sue's positivity this is not the first time we see it it certainly won't be the last time but sue seems to look at every situation that would really bum other people out to put it plainly and turns it into a positive and here she is laminating things because she's not part of any other club and she makes it her own club and i think that's really sweet she then meets a boy called brendan who goes to get his student ID laminated because he's new at the school. And immediately we can tell Sue has a crush on this boy. And we'll come back to that in a little bit. Brick is then in the back of the car still, but going on this test ride with others who are working at Ellard Motors. And (laughs) the tannoy I loved when we hear that Frankie's package has been placed in the back of a different car, which I rather liked. And then Axel shows up, he gets a test ride, we get a nice moment with Bob. I feel like at this point we're starting to get to know more about Bob and who Bob is as a person, as a character, and I rather like Bob's involvement in this episode as a whole. Things seem to be looking up very briefly when Brick makes his own sandwich. I feel like that part fell a little bit flat. I feel like there should have been some kind of joke there. I was waiting for there to be some kind of reveal that actually Brick didn't make a sandwich very well. I mean, it never never really got that. And maybe I was looking for something that wasn't there, but I felt like we were being set up for something that never delivered. I'd love to know if anybody else feels the same way or if I'm just reading too much into it. Maybe it's telling that I expect everything to go wrong in the middle for Frankie. I don't mean things to go wrong in the narrative, but I expect everything that seems like it's going to be a good thing to then turn into a bad thing. And maybe maybe I'm a terrible pessimist. Maybe that's what's wrong with me. Frankie is so focused on Brick making the sandwich that she isn't paying attention to what Sue is saying. We have a little bit of suspense here. I really like this because Sue is talking to Frankie about Brendan And she comes up with a plan and Frankie says, yes, go for it. But she hasn't been listening to Sue and we don't immediately know what Sue's bright idea is. And I like that. We have a little bit of suspense and I'll come back to that again when we get there chronologically. Meanwhile, things are just getting on top of Frankie. She now has to help out Aunt Edie and Aunt Ginny. We then get this montage of Frankie looking after the ants and looking after Brick. And I just think the way that everything w- was shown there was very effective. It only lasted a, a couple of seconds, but it was it was well done. We then find out Sue's grand plan. as She is wearing a t-shirt with her face and Brandon's face inside a heart. Thankfully, Frankie managed to tell Sue to change the shirt before it was too late, but things don't exactly go well for Sue a little later on. Meanwhile, we learn that Doris, the dog, has emphysema. And this is just an aside, but as as a random note, it made me wonder if this episode, or Doris, the dog in particular, has influenced me, because if I ever get a dog, which I might one day, and it's a female, which it probably wouldn't be, because I'd rather have a boy dog, but if I got a female dog, Doris is my name of choice. And she would be named after Doris Day. But I'm wondering if in the back of my mind somewhere I was remembering this dog called Doris. And I really liked the fact that a dog was called Doris. I don't know. It just, it struck me as entertaining that if I were to get a female dog, it would be called Doris or she would be called Doris. And then I'd completely forgotten that the dog in the middle was called Doris. So I found that to be rather entertaining, but completely irrelevant to my enjoyment of the episode. We then see... 
Frankie driving away from the house while Mike is wheeling Doris. This was what was shown in the very opening scene. It's nice to finally have context for that. To be honest, I'd forgotten about that. But it's nice to finally piece together those bits of the puzzle. And then Sue is asking Mike for advice on boys. And to his credit, while he didn't initially want to help her out because he doesn't, I guess, want to think of his young daughter thinking about boys. He does, and he talks about this grand gesture, and we get a little bit of a backstory about how he would woo Frankie before they were in a proper relationship, and it's very sweet. And then, again, things don't go well for Sue, but we will circle back to that. Meanwhile, we get to know a little bit more about Bob. We establish that Bob really just wants to be needed. And he helps Frankie out by allowing her 15 minutes in the bathroom to pamper herself. And honestly, it made me feel a little bit sick. I couldn't even imagine spending that much time in a public bathroom. Well, it's the bathroom at, at, at work at Ellard Motors. But still, I couldn't imagine relaxing in a bathroom other than my own. So it wasn't really something that I found to be appealing, but certainly it was very entertaining. And on the one hand... What happens next, I think, was kind of predictable. I expected Frankie to come out of the bathroom and to have a lot of chaos because she dared to take time for herself, but I didn't expect what happened to be actually what happened. The coffee pot basically caught on fire, and then Frankie has a million missed calls and voice messages, and it turns out, and we piece everything together really well. I think the pacing here was brilliant. We find out that... Sue had sung on the tannoy to get Brendan's attention. Didn't work out well. Axel had been driving an aunt to the mall when Doris, having been taken for a walk by Brick, wheeled out in front of the car in the middle of the road and Axel had to swerve. It caused a crash and everything happened very quickly and it was all very, very chaotic. And obviously Frankie is not exactly pleased about this and as she said to them the, to the children why didn't you call your father and the, the children pointed out that Mike doesn't like it when they call him call him at work but to be fair I assume Frankie doesn't like it either when people call her at work and things end in a way that's very sweet and Mike tells Frankie he has something to sh show her in the car and they go into the car and he tells her to buckle up and off they drive to the Remnant Carpet Store. And Bob has his chance to feel like part of the family as he's looking after the kids. And it's really sweet. And I like that Bob's being brought into this a little bit more. And then I loved how it ended as well, because Mike and Frankie have been to the carpet store. They've got the carpet remnant. They decide to take a little time to themselves and they carry the carpet to the middle of a park and they lay it out and lie on it. And honestly, it looks really peaceful. And then people start cycling over it with their bikes and it gets muddy and dirty. And it's really, really fun. Beautifully filmed as well. We get a bird's eye view and it's, it's really lovely. And, and Frankie is, is narrating over it basically highlighting the fact that life is difficult, but as long as you have somebody by your side, then it's not so bad, which is a nice message to end on. It is a good episode. It probably isn't ever going to be one of my favourites, but that being said, it's also probably not that memorable either because I couldn't remember very much of what happened in this one. For example, when Sue had a plan, I, I couldn't remember what her plan was, which worked well because it meant that I had the suspense of the episode had I remembered it from when I used to watch the show a lot about, about a decade ago, maybe longer than a decade now. It probably wouldn't have been as good this time round because I would have been able to know what was happening. So if I could remember everything in this, I don't think it's an episode that I'd enjoy very much. But because I am basically watching it for the first time in over a decade and my memory isn't great, it wasn't too bad. All things considered, the floating anniversary definitely has some good moments and it's ultimately a pretty decent episode.